to have 50 to 60 migrants for many years, for over 50, many migrants, sorry, bright minds. You know, if I think he said for the last 50 to 60 years, I would have to look back on the article one moment. Right, so he said for the last 50 to 60 years, a number of bright minds have been migrating and the country suffers from brain drain. We are struggling. You know, people have no faith in the government. And when we, when we vloggers who mean well for people speak out, people take it as, ah, uh, oh, you are labeled a particular side. Because he even mentioned that the bright minds are people who don't necessarily have a particular political affiliation. So you wouldn't call them either PNP or JLP. They're for the P, they're for the country. I don't know why many Jamaicans can't seem to get that, that they're people who are not for whether, whether it's green or what the other color is, orange. It's not, it is a matter of what they are for Jamaica and its growth and its development. They're not for, they're not um, for this or oh, orange and green because when you do that, sometimes you get lost and people are forgotten as we are seeing now. Visa subscribers, I heard what this beautiful lady said, my people. When we, the citizen, speak about the corruption that is affecting our country, people want to crucify you and say, oh, you're a JP supporter or you're a PP supporter. No, we're talking about policy, accountability, integrity. Are we going to ask ourselves? Prime Minister Andrew Honest, position is not compromised. Visa and subscribers, let me know in the comment section. Look at Prime Minister Andrew Honest and his administration, my people. So much corruption in the country. Visa and subscribers, billions just missing like that. Visa and subscribers, and no one all accountable. Let me ask all Jamaican citizens, locally, internationally, who run in the country? Let the question, Visa and subscribers, who have all the access to our tax money? Let me know in the comment section. Visa and subscribers, Prime Minister Andrew Honest, last his credibility, this man have no humanity, my people. Our Prime Minister, in his right mind, appeal against the constitutional law, my people this is a government that we have humble plead you know the man mp and 81 million and still counting to six civil servant when i'm suspend yeah man six civil servant will get suspend over corruption you get me suspend over corruption matters you hear that and still appear them you know yeah man one of them is dr grace mclean mm, from 2021 them suspend her and she still get her right pay. Sixteen million dollars she rake out of her money already, you know? God Almighty, I couldn't believe she's sitting because so of my God. We know what we We fix up the whole nation. Dr. Grace McLean, sixteen million dollars from 2021 to now. She rake out. Yeah, man, I that she get her ready, man. While she the woman, I relax, man. Yeah man, that chair rake out our hard earned tax paying money. I remember the one named Mark Barnett. Yeah man, him see one from Water Commission the man. Where they build the apartment with the bag of breaches. Yes man, him see one. Hm, <laughs> thirteen million dollar him gone from what name there? From October last year, thirteen million dollar him get paid. Thirteen million dollar him get paid and him get suspended. Yeah? Thirteen million dollar. For suspension over corruption related matters. So check now from October to now that about was six months. And to tell you say thirteen million that I'm get from no, from them time there. So that means say I go home with at least two point one million dollar per month. Jaja Jaja no wickedness can stop a rotted Jaja. You see it, my peeps? You see so this government and I think because them. Um, why is them suspend these people and put people in the position of act and I'm gonna pay them, you know, basically 70% of what a person there would them suspend with I get. So obviously Mark Barnett would I get um 2.1 million, so that person would I get uh, 70% of that, then would I get about 1.6 to 1 to 1.7 million. You understand me? Per month. So you suspend a man and you employ somebody in the position. You get me? Eh? Over corruption related matters. You tell me now, Jamaica, my peeps in a diaspora, I only more I hear from. You tell me now whether you think that this is right or wrong for the government. Do from you get suspended after corruption related matters and then before the court, they must either pay or pay or don't pay none at all till the case resolved. Then they get a full compensation. That is my view on it. I know the media boss always have him own view, so who like it, like it, and who don't like it, just don't like it. This is my view, it's not your view, but I want to hear your view. Dear Jamaicans, let's talk about the Donaldism poll that was published today. 
Sunday, April 28th by the Jamaica Gleaner. Now, for the first time since he has become the president of the People's National Party, Mark Golding is in a statistical dead heat with Andrew Holness in terms of the favorability ratings. Let's discuss. Now, this poll conducted by Don Anderson was done immediately post budget so one would assume that the governing jamaica labor party and andrew holness in particular would have gotten a bounce off of all of that especially since them claim them did win the local government election which was a few weeks before that right well not according to the poll so according to the poll the favorability of andrew holness is 40 percent whereas the favorability of mark golding is 37 percent that's only a three percent difference now bear in mind mark golding is coming from a low of 12 percent a little bit after he became the president then it went to 18 percent and now it is at a whopping 37 percent so he has gained literally three times his the favorability in as as many years right now in terms of negativity this is where it gets really interesting now mark golding's negativity has decreased to an auto time low of 18.1 percent remember a few years ago mark golding's negativity rating was all the way at 47 percent it is now at 18.1 percent whereas andrew holness's negativity rating is 31.1 one percent that is almost double mark golding's negativity rating imagine that no this can simply be explained by a bell curve where we all know that products when they're introduced to a market they increase with a bang then they mature then they live, live off and then they decline andrew wholeness is an expired product it's like an expired drug People have seen him, used him, them tired of him now, they're ready for a new leader. No wonder Dr. Harris Chang was so depressed when he was asked about why is the JLP doing so badly? To see a big man like that almost in tears when he's explaining that JLP needs to change their message was really something to behold. But it actually goes deeper than that let's look at the net favorability overall mark golding's net favorability is 19 percent whereas andrew holness's net favorability is nine percent and the net favorability of course is when you minus the negative from the positive and that's how you get it but that's not the only thing that dan anderson looked at he also looked at performance right the, the how jamaicans viewed the performance of each political leader now over the years mark golding has constantly been trailing andrew holness always all right but this time now andrew holness is negative his performance the negative rating is 34 percent whereas mark golding's negative rating is only 25 percent Mark, now, Andrew Holness's positive performance is 33%, whereas Mark Golding's is 21%. But if you look at where Mark Golding is coming from over the years, you realize that Mark Golding has basically grown leaps and bounds in terms of his popularity. Now, if I were a laborite, I'd be having a headache. If I were a laborite, I'd realize that Andrew Holness is on the decline on his bell curve and you have to look at him as a product because that's what they are their products and the parties have to look at how marketable he is remember i've already discussed with you the fact that everywhere andrew holness went to campaign during the local government election there was a loss all most of the divisions that he went in that you can think of from the top of your head they all lost when andrew holness went there to campaign it is a serious wake-up call for the jlp i'm saying that to say this don't be surprised if andrew holness is not the leader of the jlp going into the election 
because a whole lot of bangarang should be happening over there when they take a stock and analyze the numbers of the polls. Andrew Holness is on his way out. Mark Golding is soaring. And pretty soon, according to these, according to the, the laws governing how products do, Mark Golding is going to surpass Andrew Holness, and that might be just around the corner before the next election. They won't see back the throne of grace anymore come the next election and the results in the the local government el government election is basically indicative of same we are at a like a dead heat a standstill with you know some of the places that they didn't know they would have lost they lost in one particular parish they lost all um votes not one vote they, they lost all of it Everything went to one side. When I say lost, all meaning they lost. I shouldn't say, well, I, I'm not saying that people probably didn't vote for them. I'm saying in terms of with the winning aspect of it, they lost the seat for the local government elections. Because they're not listening to the people. Had they listened to the people, they would not have lost. Had the people been happy, they would not have lost. People don't give up the, people don't give up the best for the good. Unless something is wrong with their brain mentally. Un unless there, if, if there is a mental defect or challenge or some sort of handicap of the mind, then I can understand them giving up the best for the good, like a bad relationship. But in general, if somebody sees something that is, I mean, enthralling and enriching and life transforming for the better, they're not going to give up on it. They're going to hold on to it for dear life, like money. They're not going to let go of it. That is what people don't understand. People don't let go of solid and good leadership. Talk to me and Motley and some of the other Caribbean leaders that we have. Mohammed a leader, you know. Not the boxer, obviously. The one for Grenada, I'm talking. So I don't, you know, it, it, sometimes it, you almost feel like it is so futile and prove fruitless. To be speaking out because people are going to link it as a political, tribalistic, uh, combative vlog, which it is not. It is just calling a spade a spade. Presently, you guys are not doing well overall. You can't just pick out a one thing here and there. That is why when they talk about majority rules, we know that you have exceptions. So you can't, what you're doing is basking in the exceptions. They might give a one house there, a one, two, something there, a little scholarship over there, but the majority is not benefiting. So there's something, you know, it seems as if something went off as it relates to leadership and governance and management of the people of Jamaica. See, the man came out and based on how I'm reading, how he's, he's writing, it seems as if he's a, a party affiliate. I don't know him, as I said. I don't know how he looks. I don't know anything about him. But it's just a look at how he's writing. And I'm making this summarization. I can't say because I don't like. I don't like when people label people and they're not sure. Right? Because it's almost so like, although he's chiding them, he's trying to give them ways to win the next election. But some people, dull. I don't, I don't want to use the word dunce. Dull to figure that out, to see through that. It's like you're doing something wrong and when your parents scold you, you quarrel. Not knowing that the scolding is trying to mitigate you getting into further hot water. Save your life, so to speak. But people don't see that. They all just want to live in a hunky-dory world, a fake world. Since you don't love to talk about people fake and false. This fake, this thing about with Fitch and Moody and all of that in terms of our con it's These things I consider them not real. We're not doing well. And it has nothing to do with money not being here. It is just not being allocated well. It's misappropriated. It is not. And corruption is too high. How can you be comfortable in a country where, I mean, it's a heavy brain drain and dunceness is high. It is like a stench in the nostrils of God. Look at the people. Look at how they communicate. When you go on different social media platforms, the things that they communicate Children reading at basic school, children in high school who are in high school, reading at the basic school level or below, some reading at the grade four level or below. Three different times something in the articles came out. It means it is a it is maybe an epidemic. I wouldn't call it a pandemic right now. I would say it's like an epidemic. I wouldn't call it a pandemic.
our country and the people are not doing well financially. They're not doing well socially. They're not doing well educationally, spiritually. They're certainly not doing well. Look at what is happening. People are lauding and praising occultism, obia, necromancy, witchcraft, all these evil things, these atrocities against God. People have no reverence for people of God anymore. They don't fear the men and women of God. And when I say fear, I'm not talking like a ghost. Fear as in respect. I'm looking at it from the etymology of respect, under the guise of respect. People don't respect teachers. I used to give a whole lot of trouble in school, but I mean, for the most part, I had to respect my teacher. I couldn't dare think of putting my hands on a teacher, telling my, my teacher all manner of evil and vitriol. I would be out of my cotton-picking mind. We couldn't dare, you know, disrespect our teachers. And we couldn't. And when I see what is happening, you know, in terms of just teachers, public sector workers in, in the civil servants, can you imagine when I listened to the Civil Service Association president, the Jamaica Civil Service Association president, and she said she tried to get through to the Ministry of Finance for however long, cannot get through to them because people are to get back some back monies on whether it's passenger mileage, or salaries or whatnot. I don't know if anything has happened. A meeting that should have happened in January. I don't know if it has happened. We have not gotten anything. It and we I mean information and we're now at the ending of April basically. The country is not being manned properly, it's not being run properly, you know? And that is why the man would have talked about changing Belmont Road from Sepulchre. <laughs>